All right, this week's challenge comes uh, from a question that I often get, and people ask this. Doesn't the fact that there are numerous former homosexuals who have since gone back to living gay lives somehow prove that uh, changing someone's sexual orientation is impossible? Well, the short answer is no, it doesn't prove that. Uh, sure, there are and will continue to always be people who claim that they are once former homosexuals who have since gone back to living gay lives. But this does very little to prove anything about the effectiveness of sexual orientation change efforts. And here's why. The main problem with this challenge is that people who raise it fail to apply the same standards of effectiveness to sexual orientation change efforts as they do to other treatments or other behaviors or other conditions. For example, many people who are struggling with alcoholism attend AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, and many people go through their program to help them overcome the temptation and the struggles associated with alcoholism. Now, some people suggest that AA's success rate is no more than about 25% effectiveness. That's pretty low. Now, it is a fact that some people uh, fail to succeed at changing their ability to overcome alcoholism, or the fact that many people, even after they've successfully gone through that program, continue to drink, and some people even revert back to alcoholism, somehow prove that AA's efforts are a complete failure or never work. Well, of course not. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything to prove that. It just simply proves that some people are, are unable to maintain the change that they have uh, received through their program. The same is true with depression or obsessive compulsive disorders. Lots of people attend uh, therapy and counseling to overcome depression. Now, if some people continue to remain depressed after that treatment, after that counseling and therapy, does that mean that their therapy or counseling is not effective? No, of course not. Uh, does it mean that somehow no one else can over, ever overcome depression? Absolutely not. Some people who get therapy and counseling for obsessive compulsive disorders may even perhaps sometime later still struggle with engaging in those obsessive compulsive behaviors. Does that mean that therapy for depression and obsessive compulsive behaviors is never effective? No, of course not. Even if a lot of people eventually revert back, it doesn't prove anything. And this is the case with all sorts of behaviors, with all sorts of treatments and conditions. The point is, is that there are many situations in which although some people revert back to their old ways, it doesn't do anything to disprove the broader effectiveness of, of these sorts of therapies and conditions. Those things sometimes still do work, and that's the point. That's why it's ridiculous to expect the same kind of effectiveness without any possibility of relapse when it comes to uh, people who are trying to change same-sex attraction. Uh, sure, there are people who will revert back, but this does very little to prove that sexual orientation change efforts are never effective. Um, yes, we should expect that some people who have changed, who are no longer homosexuals, will go back. That's normal. That's the case for every condition, every psychological behavior, every sort of uh, uh, treatment that will be applied to people. But this does not prove that, therefore, people can never change. It doesn't even prove that those people who did change and then who later have gone back to living gay lives never experienced a genuine change in the first place. Because in reality, if sexuality is fluid, which by the way what is what most secular studies show, that people can change back and forth, then we would expect that some people who have experienced measurable and genuine change will also revert back to living gay lives. So again, the fact that you don't have a 100% success rate and that some people will relapse and go back living as gay, as gay men and women does not in any way affect the fact that some people do experience genuine change. The only way then that this challenge can be sustained is if you apply a different standard for the effectiveness of sexual orientation change efforts than you do with change efforts uh, when it comes to any other kind of psychological condition or behavior.